team on the left side. They are Sailor Sanchi. And we have Art playing Tyrande on the top left. Costa playing ETC, Singham playing Vala, and Lunar playing Malfurion, and all by herself in the bot lane it is Mishko playing Zagara. Ten seconds. And their opponents on the right side as the red team, they are inside games with Darren Echo playing Jaina, Uther played by Iziakus, the sub player. Then we have Jekyll playing Zeratul, and down in the bot lane we have Hydex playing Sylvanas and Mikichi playing once again the Warrior playing Diablo. And it looks like it's gonna be party lane versus party lane. Well, let me just fix this. Alright, now the names match up. Ah, uh, well, they're switching around. Usually you see the party lane in mid lane in, on Sky Temple, just because the first two temples that spawn are mid and top lane. Ooh, Jaina has some solid control in top lane. Oh, my favorite finally deciding to join in again. But that should be an interesting matchup. I think Jaina will push this quite hard. And down here, oh, it did rotate up, but uh, so did Tyrande and Singham. Ooh, nice little stun up to Darren Echo, and there's the rune. What a move! That's first blood going over to Sailor Sanchi, but oh, nice little uh, retribution there. Going for Tyrande. And these early game kills don't really matter all that much. You can see both teams have almost equal XP. And let's have a look at the talents picked up here. Conjurer's Pursuit on Dolphurion. We have Rancor picked by Vala. Interesting. Hatred Stacks increase attack speed. And we have Ranger's Mark picked by Tyrande. And Constitution on Zagara. And Block picked by ETC. So Vala is the only surprise here. And the temples will be up pretty soon. Diablo already going for top temple. And it looks like Vala is going for mid temple. Jaina's still sticking around. Zeratul might make things a little bit difficult here for Vala. Let's see, he's coming from the left side, or is he? I can't really decide. Oh, it's it's tough for him. It's a party lane down there. Zykus is uh, the only one there in mid lane. And top lane under really solid control for Diablo. And now Jaina's coming down. Jaina and Jackal might actually um, do some damage here to Costa. Good heal coming in. But yeah. Uh, that's pretty much top temple going the entire way to inside games. And mid temple, that's not going to be contested all that much. If we heroes are in position now, they might make it work. They're losing a lot of XP in the process. And that might not, not be worth it. There's the summon to sing him. But no real follow up. Zagara was taken out um, down in bot lane. So that's a really nice move, but so was Sylvanas. So, one for one. And they finally get a few shots. Nope, they do not. They do not. Party lane will switch over to the top. And let's go on with the talents. Um, Alright, additional damage. We're taking the Manticore. We have the Healing Ward on Malfurion. Protective Shield taken by Tyrande. And down here in Venom Spines for Zagara. Echo Pedal for ETC. No surprises down there either. Ooh, bruises will be taken for inside games. And down here, a nice little sea giant steal by Art, Costa, and Singham. That's a really ballsy move, but since they have three heroes down there, um, it's a really uh, fast way to get these sea giants. And right now, they will do a lot of damage if they're not dealt with, especially since they can attack from behind the wall. And then they have Zagara in front to do damage, uh, sea giants in the back. And Jaina, well, she's already dealing with it. Now, his icons in to help out. But still, a little bit of damage done into that tower. Might not have been worth it, they lost a little bit of XP, but still ahead in the XP game, and now even going for the Bruiser camp. Once again, two heroes dealing with these, and Arden Singham, I think they can deal with this uh, quite fine. With a, with a stun and a lot of damage by Vala. A little bit of uh, indecisiveness here on this side of Inside Games, to be honest. Uh, switching around quite a bit, not really all too sure uh, what, they're, what they're planning to do here. Oh, Malfurion going for the Mule, which is a perfect choice here on Sky Temple. Uh, then we have Searing Attacks on Vala, the Lunar Blaze for Tyrande, Rapid Incubation taken by Zagara, and the Guitar Hero, of course, is taken by ETC. On the other side, we have Greater Cleave, 
Gathering power, void slash, oh, for zero tool. And, oh, Mishko! Completely out of position. Nice pick up here for inside games. And that's gonna give him quite a nice lead here for that last temple. We have everyone in position already. And ETC kind of running around the boss there. I'm not too sure what he's planning. He's picked up. I mean, Zagara has perfect vision of him. Uh, well. That does provide her team at least a little bit of vision, but ooh, nice! Going for uh, the counter-aggression, having Zeratul in that position, and then the, almost the entire team uh, attacking the fort. And only Zagara to defend. Uh, at the same time, boss will be taken here uh, by Sailor Senji. Interesting choice, but now they have uh, the team of Inside Games backed up into a corner. They're going for it. Hydex, oh! She might go down here, but a nice little shield coming down. Keeping her alive for a little bit longer. Ooh, the boss might have gotten her, but that was really close. Is Ike also still alive? And, ooh, Costa behind the wall. That is not a smart move, my friend. And he does pay for it, but Uther is also taken out. So one for one for now, and they still got to deal with that boss. Ford was taken out on the side of Sailor Senshi, and now it might be inside games for it to fall, but still they're pushing back, and Singham is already quite low. And so is Lunar, so it uh, looks like they did put out enough damage and they will keep their fort alive. Really, really cool move. Giving us a little bit more time uh, to go over the towns, but oh nice, a few shots have been uh, gotten in here by Sailor Senshi. And yep, they do get the final four shots as well, so their fort will fall. And they will have level 10, almost half a level ahead of Inside Games. Really strong opening here for Sailor Sanji, would have not guessed that that would happen. Alright, Uther has Conjurer's Pursuit, Protective Shield and Cleanse. Then we have the Soul Feast on Diablo, Amplified Healing, Battle Momentum and Apocalypse. Deep Chill on Jaina, alongside Arcane Intellect, Frostbitten and the Summon Water Elemental. Last but not least, we have Sylvanas with, with the Wind and Venom, all through and the Wailing Arrow. Um, the Heroics are Void Prison and Divine Shield. On the other side, we have Tranquility, Reign of Vengeance, the Starfall, Devouring Maw, and Stage Dive, as expected. Oh, nice little Void Prison down here. Uh, is it gonna be enough for a team to get in there? Oh, nice follow up with the Apocalypse. But Mishko, can she get away? Nope, she can't. Jackal is quite low. And a great Maw here. Wow, Isaacus might fall? Or will he? Yes, he will. Starfall did his, uh, did his end. And Mikachi, oh, in the middle of everything, and he will fall as well. Really, really good move here on the side of Sailor Senshi. Definitely putting up a really, really tough fight. Inside Games uh, is in trouble now. Only 7 seconds on Uther. Uh, it's not going to be enough. Ooh, good, good dodge here by Daroneko. And they're still dishing out the damage. They're still engaged by Mikachi. And they're pushing them back. Ah, oh, Jaina did survive that onslaught. But it was a tough fight. And they're soaking up XP once again, still keeping that level advantage. The Garo will creep up here pretty soon, and Jaina is not in position to get that XP in those lanes either. So, inside games, they're looking for easy pickups now. Um, trying to go for heroes that are kind of out of position. This is something you might be able to do if, if you have the opposing team just going and um, trying to get all the, uh, all the XP in all lanes. But, if you don't get anyone, you've lost XP and quite a bit of that. Alright, Jaina already in position. So is Zeratul. So it looks like Top Temple going over to Inside Games. And Mikachi is waiting down on the bot side. Pasta coming in on the right. And Jekyll is he making this move. No, he's making this getaway. I don't think that was a smart idea. He needs to be with his team. Because now they're all singled out. There's the Red of Vengeance. And they clear out Valor. Apocalypse coming on a little bit too late, but Lunar caught out. And Mishko will drop. Oh, Lunar incredibly low. And some great body blocking here by Inside Games. And that's three heroes down. They definitely got this top temple under control. Might even go for the bottom temple now with two heroes. Since it's 20 second cooldown here on Malfurion. That's way too long. They have really good control of this top shrine. So I think, yeah. Uh, we just have two heroes down here, and the other three will go down, take the bot shrine, and do what they can to get a few more shots in. ETC uh, does have control for now, but there's Diablo coming in. They are a level ahead now, but you know, just, just a few experience points. Not gonna be that big boost. Oh, and Costa out of position. Hydex coming in. 
He doesn't get the final shot off. Nope, doesn't look like it. Oh, Hyda is actually in trouble. Runs into the Starfall and does drop down. Mikachi needs to get out of there as well. They, they got the perfect timing to draw them out of position. And Mikachi with a nice little dodge there. It looks like he might be able to get away. Yes, he will. Jackal also coming out to help. But still, this should have worked out a lot better for inside games. Just overextended quite a bit. Should have just st stuck around in the temple. Gotten a few more shots in. And now, that's a top tap. Uh, top forge. Uh, top forge should fall. Yep. Last few shots. Oh, barely going down. 570 HP. Jeez. And another great maw here. Mishko really doing an amazing job at that. And the engage. Art uh, is quite low. She needs to get out of there. Oh, she does not. And there's the Void Prison. And Jackal runs around. Goes for the kill on Mishko. Lunar won't get away either. And that's almost an entire team going down. And their time to take the boss. ETC can't do anything about it. They even have the Sea Giants with the boss. That's going to be a really, really strong push. I guess they're just going to let the Sea Giant and the boss push. Then take mid fort by themselves. ETC, man, are you sure about this? Are you sure about this? Ooh, this is gonna be tough for him to make a getaway. Oh, nice little overpower onto Costa. And he runs straight into them. Yep, no way to get away from that team. Oh, jeez, even going for the Siege Giant Steel. That's gonna be an amazingly strong push. Maybe they're just gonna let that mid lane slide, or are they? Nope, turning around, going for mid lane, okay. I guess it's the safer option. They're gonna have a really strong uh, push in bot lane as well. And maybe even have enough time to take out the fort and then still go and help out their uh, mercenaries in the bot lane. I think it could work out. Let's have a look. I'll say Lassenshi is dealing with us. Oh, four siege giants. The boss does go down. It took out the gate, uh, took out two tower. Well, one tower, two, two might fall. No, enough damage output. We'll keep that tower alive. Still a nice little steal here on the bruisers. So inside games definitely making their use of um, that really well thought out plan. They will get their own bruisers as well. Or will they? Templates are coming up. They have a two level advantage. Let's have a look at that level 16 talents. Uh, Ren and Cleave, Heart and Focus, Posing Presence, Northern Exposure and Blood for Blood taken by Solanas. Yep, going for the bruisers and still having time to catch up and get to the temples in time. Uh, looks like they will go for the same temples. We have the Shrink Ray on Mafirian, Giant Killer on Valor, Overflowing Light on Turanda, Mutalisk taken by Zagara and the Uber Rockstar taken by ETC. And level 16 will come in in half a level. Oop. Okay, I guess they're trying to move down here. With the level 16 available, they have a little bit of an edge. Oh, Singham, you're in trouble, my friend! But, oh, nice little Raid of Vengeance save, but it doesn't matter in the end. Jackal just... Uh, he just teleported out of there. And that's control over to Batrain for inside games. Uh, Zeratul moving up, trying to contest with ETC. And, well, even Diablo coming out there. The two of them can definitely take on Costa. But Art and Mishko come in to help out. And Jekyll. Ooh, wow. That was close. That was really close. And he's getting in there once again. Nice little Void Prism on three of these heroes. But not the entire team is in position. Ooh, that's a good Apocalypse follow-up. Zero Tool this was taken out here by Darren Echo. Uh, oh no, never mind. He couldn't save him. Uh, in the end, both teams uh, got their fair share uh, of the temples. Ooh, Hydex needs to watch out. Casta almost... Almost managed to overthrow him. And yeah, a lot of damage done uh, onto the first keep over here. I don't think they got too much damage in either. Ooh, ETC. Didn't watch out there. Yep, that's the next one. But neither of these teams have done too much damage onto the, onto the keep so far. And I'm not too sure what Inside Games is planning right now. Maybe uh, just all out aggression on the keep. Siege camp will be available. Yes, there they are. So I guess they're gonna go for a Siege Giants. Siege Giants, double Siege Giant push. Once again. I think this could work out quite well. Zeratul will join the fray here in a sec. And there's the capture. Siege Giants, uh, they're still alive. At least one of them is. Well, both of them. I guess uh, that's gonna be a really nice push. 
the keep. Uh, did take a little bit of damage from the lasers already. So they're definitely gonna get this keep and solidify their advantage. Let's have a look at the level 16 talents on the side of Sailor Sanji. We have Tenacious Roots, Blood for Blood, True Shot Aura, Root Expansion and Stone Skin on ETC. And yeah, those Sea Giants really doing some good work. The Mule helping out quite a bit. I think the Mule definitely uh, already did some good work for Sailor Sanji. There they are, they're coming in, trying to make their move on the right side, but it's tough. And now that the Sea Giants are gone, they've kind of missed their, missed their timing window. Maybe if they draw someone out of the position, they can make still make it work, but it looks like they're not going to go for it. Their Bruiser Camp should be coming up once again, and so should their opponents. Yep, 20 seconds. And so far, just waiting. Waiting for a little bit of a misstep. It's not gonna happen, both teams will clash here in the middle for that one single temple. And, oh, nice little creep here, but Mishko not doing um, an equally good job uh, as we saw in that last game with uh, Zagara play. Creep tumors just were out of this world in that last game. But here, uh, a little bit lackluster. Still improve a bit. And neither of these teams just yet making their move. Still waiting for the first uh, first defenders to spawn. And there they are. Okay, I'm just waiting for Zeratul to put down a good little void prison. It's not gonna happen. He, he wants to have two or more heroes in there. So far they're not clumping, they're really playing this out well. And just a single advantage here for Insta Games. Oh, nice little overpower. But Costa still gets away, and the good Rain of Vengeance fallout. There, Neko needs to get out of that fight. So does Jackal, but ETC falls, and there is the Maul onto Hydax. And Jackal falls. Hydax will drop out as well. Isaiah should get shouldn't get away either. And that's a nice little trade here. Three heroes for just uh, for just one. That gives them solid control of that temple. Might even give him a chance to go for the boss. Oh, looks like it will. Mishko is already in position. And Mafurin is the only one to stick around. Do some damage on the keep. And, yep, this keep, well, it's at least gonna uh, get a lot of damage in there. And with a follow up with the boss, uh, nice little pushing power. Good thing Inside Games is going straight for their own bruisers. Both teams should hit level 20 almost simultaneously, so this is far from over, but nice little move by Sailor Sentry to make the comeback possible. And now the boss will have to be stopped, still 14 seconds on most heroes to make a comeback, but it should be enough, should be enough for them to get the boss there. And yes, both teams will hit level 20 almost exactly at the same time. Yep, there's level 20, let's see what they're gonna go for. We have Storm Shield for Mephurian. Arden Shield on ETC, another Storm Shield for Tyrande, Nexus Frenzy by Valor, and the Bull of the Storm on Zagara. Double Storm Shield, Ooh, this should change things quite a bit. Oh, Mikachi completely out of position, there's a Shrink Ray onto him. I don't think he can get away from this. Or can he? Nice Apocalypse. A really great Apocalypse, but is it gonna be worth it without Diablo in there? Oh jeez, that keep is definitely gonna go down. Void Prison is really well placed and a good mod to uh, keep their team safe. Mikachi is back in the fray, but Mishka, he's quite low. It does get away, for now at least. They're pushing this back and keeping control, but keep did go down. And, whoa, good route onto Mikachi. The trans are still in there. They will need to be stopped, but it looks like everyone is retreating and Mikachi needs to watch out. Being by himself is not gonna help, and you don't have that. Uh, yeah, you don't have that massive amount of soul stones to make a quick comeback happen. Well, they're giving chase. I don't know if that's the right idea here. All right, let's have a look at their storm powers. We have rewind on Zero Tool, double storm shield on Diablo and Uther, bottle of storm on Jaina, and the deafening blast on Sylvanas. Oh, and they're taking laser shots on the core. Or did they? Nope, that wasn't laser shots just yet. Temples just come up. Mid and top temple. Is that game's already going for mid temple. And ooh, they're getting quite a bit of damage in here, but uh, fortunately for Sailor Senshi, not the same temple that was engaged. It's not the same keep that was engaged last time. And they have level advantage now. Just 
maybe half a level, not even. But still a little bit of an advantage. Maybe enough uh, to force inside games out of out of the mid temple. And they're not gonna risk it, they're not gonna send one hero up to top lane uh, to go for the top temple. That would be way too risky at this point. You really wanna have everyone in position to go for the team fights. 5v5. Okay, and Nature Kukasta. Gonna get a little bit of room in that temple. Kasta just pushing him out, doing a really, really good job, and also good healing by Mafuri and keeping Kasta alive and keeping him in there. And the final shots go do go down on the top keep, and it's almost down. I think uh, a few catapults might be enough to finish it off. Oh, Kasta going for it. Inside games, they need to make something happen, otherwise, um, oh, I think this temple might actually kill the core already. Yep, it's doing some really solid damage on the core. Shields will be down in just two more shots. Mm, they still have a lot of shots left. They're not gonna kill the core outright. Um, they might finish them off later. Oh, Jaina, unfortunately dropping from the game. Nice little apocalypse, but no real follow-up coming out. And there's the Reign of Vengeance. Really nice move. Ufer goes down, so does Diablo. And Hydrex. Oh, he might fall as well. If not, it doesn't really matter. The mod got Jaina and... Well, Zeratul fall fell in between as well. This is gonna be game. They're just gonna go for the core, finish it off. Um, a few more shots are in here. Um, that might already be enough. I think it might be. And just to top it off, they still have all their heroes running over here. And that's GG for ya. Sailor Senshi going 1-0 up against Inside Games. Not something I would have predicted from their standings so far and their, their placements in previous cups, but hey. That was a really, really solid opener for them. Let's do this once again. Here they are, our blue team on the left side from Russia, Sailor Senshi. And they're up 1-0. Singham leading the charge as Kerrigan. We have Luna playing Uther, Art playing Tyrande. In the mid lane we have Costa playing Tyrael and all by himself. In the bot lane, Mishko playing Vala. Their opponents on the right side. In the red team colors, they are inside games with Zyakas on Malfurion, Idex playing Savannas, Mikachi is playing Diablo. In the mid lane, we have Jekyll playing Falstad. In the top lane, last but not least, Neroneko playing Zagara. And he already started some nice little creep spread over here. Definitely looking up to his creep spread. Party lane will be top lane on the side of Sailor Sanji and bot lane on the side of Inside Games. Oh, it's like a solid uh, solid party lane. Mishka will need to step back and play it safe. I think Zagara is a perfect hero to go up against the party lane. Because um, she still uh, she has some really nice long range engagements and with that creep is not gonna be surprised all that uh, all that fast. Oh Jackal. Needed to watch out. They're roaming down. It's gonna be party lane versus party lane, which makes a lot of sense. Sing and Mart uh, will join Val down here, and I'm kind of surprised. You can see um, Zykus and Hydex didn't do all that much so far, and Bishko really doing an amazing job just pushing them back. Oh, this could be strong. There's Sing coming in. Hydex out of position, but a nice little sidestep, and Costa pushed him to the wall. But a good follow up, and Mikishi, what are you doing? Oh, it's one for one. First blood did go through Sailor Sanchi, but. Hey, it didn't really matter in the end. I think they might have even lost a little bit of XP since they had four heroes down here, but hey. Uh, they're all returning. We have uh, Kerrigan going to join Jekyll in that lane. But still, he managed to push it a little bit, a little bit further, getting a little bit of damage on that tower. And let's have a look at Zagara once again. Oh, Lunarn. The sneaky, sneaky lumberjack. Coming in from the back, but. Neroneko can't be surprised. He, of course, has, has some really good creep spread and saw them coming. So that's not gonna happen here. That's not gonna happen. I'd really uh, uh, advise against uh, shifting the party lane up there. Zagara is not gonna be surprised at all. And down here, they really need help because right now, dishing out some really good damage on those towers. Both towers should fall before anyone gets there, and the first tribute does spawn in bot lane. 
So both teams have about equal number of players down here. Ooh, Mikachi already quite low. That's not a good spot to go into the tribute fight. And ooh, once again, some good damage and a nice little grasp. There comes the follow up, and Diablo once again goes down. Two kills onto him. And with a tribute. Well, can they get the tribute? That's the question. I think they will be able to. Only Malfurion in a position to stop them. Yep, that's the first tribute going to them without any contest coming out of Inside Games. So far, already looking good for Sailor Senshi. And another nice rotation, but Jackal, he's on his toes, sticking close to the walls. Not too much that should happen at this point. Have a look at the talents over here. Conjurer's Pursuit, Protective Shield, the Sweeping Grasp, get a little bit more range, and then Venom on Kerrigan. Then we have the Ranger's Mark and Healing Ward, the uh, Multi-Shot Build, Composite Arrows and Ars Arsenal, Purge Evil, and Even in Death. Oh, that's interesting. Non-heroic abilities can be used before exploding, but deal no damage. Okay. Sounds weird. We have the Power Throw on Falstad, Gathering Power, and with a wind and in venom. Oh, next tribute is coming up. Nice position for Sailor Senshi once again. Uh, the Soul Feast on Diablo, Amplified Healing, uh, Reconstitution on Zagara alongside in venom spines. And Costa needs to watch out. There's a charge into the ball, but uh, it doesn't really matter. His team is coming to join the fray. Costa's a little bit low, and there's that party, party bush. Oh my gosh, he might actually go down. Yep. Final charge in there, and a nice little knockback onto Singham. And they actually force him completely out of that fight. Art also pushed back, but a good stun keeps uh, keeps him alive. Should be a free tribute, or almost free tribute, going the way of inside games. Alright, we weren't quite done here, were we? Rapid incubation for Zagara, and then Conjurer's Pursuit. Oh jeez, Kerrigan was taken out. And Mishko might fall, but ooh, it's, it's gonna be tough. Yeah, Mikishi, you made two mistakes already. Better not make a third one. Alright, so Kajura's Pursuit, Alma Furion, alongside Protective Shield and Loon's Grace. Then we have Rapid Incubation, Battle Momentum, Follow Through, and the Boomerang on Falstad. Over here, Cleanse, Searing Attacks, Lunar Blaze, Searing Attacks once again, and the Battle Momentum on Tyrael. If you so, we're just keeping a watch over on Falstad. Basically, mainly hammering skills. And over here are Searing Attacks, Poison, and a little bit more, well, basically Initiation build for Kerrigan. And she's done that quite well so far. Well, Initiation or Catch-up, whatever you want to call it. Primal Grasp is such a strong skill. Oh, Art's coming in. They don't have any long-range engage, um, aside from Malfurion, of course. Oh, and Felsen in coming in from the top. But that's a bad spot to be in, and a nice little grasp onto his Zyakas, but ooh, Singham, getting out of position there. Idex does so much damage at this point, they need to get out of that position, but Vala is caught out, and that's 5v4, but Diablo is quite low down here, needs to get out of that fort, and that's the engage onto Singham, and so, Hydex does pop first, and they can't even get Singham, Costa will get away as well, but they did get the tribute, so... One hero for a tribute, I think that was worth it. And they also got uh, they got Tyrande and bot lane, so I guess that's fine. Mikachi still pushing down here. Needs to watch out, level 10 is now available for inside games. And they're taking the Hinterland Blast, Wailing Arrow, uh, the Warring Maw, Tranquility, and probably Apocalypse. I guess Apocalypse with the Warring Maw would make sense. Diablo did have to port back. And there's the Apocalypse. And level 10 would be available pretty soon for Sailor Senshi. There's the Maelstrom, Starfall, Strafe. I'm not surprised by Strafe. Uh, Judgment and... Come on. Final one. Probably Divine Shield. Shall we see who gathers this one? Yep, there it is. Divine Shield coming in. And next tribute is coming out. They wanted to go for the bruises, but instead went for the uh, went for the tribute. And Malfurion is already in position, but alas, the tribute is not quite spawning yet. And Mikachi, there he is, helping out as well. There we go. Tribute does spawn. Mikachi needs to watch out. Sometimes he's just a little bit over eager. There it goes down once again. Grasp. 
And a nice little follow-up, but good more by Zagaro, jeez. And there's the Hindeblad last follow-up. Zingham, ooh, quite low, but a nice little judgment onto Zai, because he will drop so quickly. And, yeah, that's two heroes down. Diablo's back in action, but he needs to get back to this fight if they want to make something happen. I guess this should be Sailor Sanji taking the tribute, but so far, inside games, they're pushing this back. And there's Diablo joining the fray once again. And Costa is pushed back and a nice little overpower. Okay, they're turning things around. 20 seconds on Tyrael. Without Tyrael, it's gonna be tough to fight for Sailor Sanji. So inside games, they're gonna go for their third and I final tribute. Yours, uh, gonna make this work or just go for the boss? Oh, looks like they're going for the boss. And counter boss play on the side of Sailor Sanji. Or is it? Uther, uh, Uther Tyrande, almost there, so is Kerrigan. They're gonna dish out a lot of damage if, if they want to make this work. Because the boss on their side is taken. Oh jeez, this is gonna be tough. Can they make it before Sailor Sanchi go for their own boss? Ah, looks like they can. Looks like they can make it. Yep, there's the capture. And just a little bit too late on the side of Inside Games. Still, boss is already wailing away at the top four. We'll get it with the help of a curse and a lot of minions. Ooh, Idex, what are you doing down there? And that's two forts going down. Are they gonna go for the mid fort as well? Still a lot of control, but they might want to stop the boss. Uh, let's see. They're gonna dish out all the damage they can on this fort. Maybe get the fort and then go for the boss afterwards. Oh, there's the engage onto Jackal, and oop, he dashes away. Nice move, and the Maw. Maybe one hero, Apocalypse comes down, oh, two heroes! Nice little hit the lamp blast follow up here, two Ronda goes down, Singham quite low, Costa goes in the middle of everything, and Mishko just one more shot, and there it goes down. But Bella is taken out as well, and Costa, can he get away? Yes, he can, but wow, that was so incredibly close. No, Invenom does get him in the end. And they do get the fort, but now it's time to move back and kill the boss. Nope, it's been killed by the fort, and it still has a little bit of health left. And with that almost team wipe, they're gonna push ahead. Just push ahead, get the towers, maybe do a little bit of damage on the keep. They're not gonna get the keep in its entirety, but hey, all the damage they can do is perfectly fine. And even going for those seed shines. Nice little move, doing a little bit more damage on top lane. I don't think they're gonna engage too far uh, with this, but wow. Two level advantage at this point. And that's Giant Killer, Invasive Fire on Sylvanas, uh, from the Shadows on, on Diablo, Grooved Spines, and the Shrink Realm of Furion. As expected. Now, oh, Bruiser Camp is up. And if they go for the next tribute, that's uh, gonna even things out for the next uh, for the uh, tribute game. But that would be that would be amazing for inside games. So they don't want to have they don't want to have Sailor Senshi have uh, two on two tributes. That would force their hand for the fast uh, for the last tribute. Not not the position they want to be in. But now, bruises in mid, sea chance in bot, and possibly a steal on the bruises, which it is incredibly risky and probably not at all worth it. But hey. Nope, they're distributing once again. Jackals take a mid, just soaking up more XP. Possibly going for uh, level 16 talents here pretty soon. And with level 16, they could actually engage into this. And they're doing it. Costa engaged upon by Miki, but oh, nice little grasp. And he might actually fall. No, he won't. Kerrigan goes down before. Mishko. Whoa, it doesn't matter. Nice hit to the blast, getting to round the anterior. Uther falls. Wow, what a stomp. Level 16, they don't even have all their talents picked up yet. Blood for blood on Sylvanas. Uh, imposing presence on Diablo, Blood expansion, the Tenacious Roots, and Overdrive. I'm gonna kill that keep and possibly go for the core straight away. Only 11 seconds, that's the problem right now. Only at level, at, at 12 minutes into the game. Cooldowns aren't really that high, but still, GG is called. And this will be the comeback for Inside Games. Closing uh, closing it out at 1 to 1. And yeah, that's gonna be enough damage. Jekyll falls, but yeah, even if just Isaacus would uh, do a little bit of damage on the core, that would be enough. Inside Games, 
making that comeback and we're going into a third and final match for tonight in the ESL Community Cup number 30. I'm G-Shock, hopefully you're enjoying the cast. If you do, red team on the right side, they are inside games with their front man Jekyll leading the charge, Oz, Bala. Then we have Malfurion played by Izaikas, Darren Echo playing Savannah's in the mid lane. We have Mikachi playing Diablo, his favorite hero, and Hydex playing Turanda. Their opponents, a blue team on the left side. We have Mishka playing Degera in the mid lane. We have Esadar played by Art and the party lane in bot. Costa playing Mr. Stitches, Lunarn playing Uther, and Singham playing uh, Jaina. And they are Sailor Senji. Okay, looks like a party stack. Oh, they're actually waiting down here. But Val is always playing so cautiously. I don't think uh, she's gonna fall into that trap. And top lane is Zagara against the party lane. Uh, this is not gonna work out too well. I think Zagara can just work so well against the party lane. Um, we saw it in that last game where they had Zagara. It's not gonna work. Hopefully they'll rotate down um, try to catch someone else. But I don't think... Well, they know that Zagara is here now. They seem the creep, but only two players are rotating down. Nope, they are rotated down now. Tassadar is not a good choice. Ooh, Vala actually went down! Jeez, must have been a nice hook here by Costa. Sorry for missing that. I guess they'll catch her pretty soon. Again. Maybe she'll watch out soon for the next one. Okay, Michi Mikachi and Hydex are coming in. Just to get a little bit more XP over here and stop this uh, stop this assault. That's a little hook by Costa. I'm afraid uh, it's coming true. The prophecy is fulfilling itself. And uh, Costa is bringing out some really good hooks. Okay. Knight has fallen. And Mikachi Jack. Oh, jeez! What another nice hook! And there comes the body block by Lunarn. But he does dash away. Nice little engage. Good thing they didn't kill all the chambers here. Otherwise, uh, Di Diablo would have been a goner. And even getting a few more seats on the left side here as well. Top. Ah, uh, Zagara needs to watch out. But it's only Zyikas for now. And, well, there's the rotation. Hydax and Darren Echo coming in. Ooh, Zagara, you need to watch out, my friend. And Creep Spread is not as good as it could be. Getting even a few more seats here on the left side. And dodging the main links. Ooh, almost all of them. Except one. And there we go. Sailor Senshi coming in. What a good shadow walk on the left side. Keeping Solana safe. And they're even getting those seeds. Costa still waiting for another nice hook, but it's not gonna happen for now. Maybe he's gonna blind hook. Zykus uh, might be in trouble. Ooh, good hit here by the Sentinel. And so far, no XP missed by either of these teams. Well, let's have a look at the talents. We have Conjurus Pursuit on both uh, Tassadar and Uther. Healing Ward picked up by Tassadar. Um, protective Shield taken by Uther. Reconstitution taken uh, by Zagara and the Envenomed Spines. And we have Shuya Food on Stitches. So a little bit more healing. Amplified healing taken as well. And the Deep Shill taken by Jaina with Envenom. On the other hand we have Conjurus Pursuit. Now by Fear. Ooh, nice little body block onto Costa and completely zoned out. But where's the follow-up engage? There it is, Stitches falls, and they're gonna grab a few more seats and even go for Jaina. Oh, where's that final blow? Sylvanas, you need to watch out, you're all by yourself, and there comes Mishka, and she won't even get that final blow onto Singham. Oh, jeez, what a sidestep by Sylvanas, what a misstep. Uh, really unfortunate, but still. Uh, okay, we do have Composite Arrows and Arsenal on Vala, and with a wind, with Venom on Savannas, there's the Soul Feast and Amplified Healing on Diablo, and Ranger's Mark and Healing Ward on Tyrande. And looks like Jackal is back in the game. Pause has been used. Oh, jeez. Hero. Back for more, hero! 
Good. Back for more, hero. Good. Back for more, hero. Good. Back for more, hero. Good. Sorry, uh, sorry, still muted. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so back in action. First, Garden Terror goes over to the side of Sailor Senshi, and they already laid down quite a bit of damage down here. And ooh, Jackal not really focusing that plant fast enough. Getting both towers and with the bruises, that's really helping out quite a bit as the rotation into mid lane. And this one is going to do quite a bit of damage as well, getting the second tower over here. And I think they're going to get at least one fourth out of this. Bruises is still active in the bot lane. Uh, top lane is being pushed by Zagara. And this just looks incredibly strong by Sailor Senshi. They have their level 10s available Archon, Divine Storm, Devouring Maw, and Pure Vile. And wow, this is just so strong. Veroneco, oh my gosh. Oh, polymorphed. And with the sidestep, he might make it. Nope, he won't. Pikachu is also in trouble. There comes the stun. Double kill on the side of Sailor Senji. Wow, what an incredible opening for them. Jeez, that was insane. And over here, Mishko also got that kill on the top. Uh, on the top fort, Hydex is in trouble, some good body blocking, but a nice little stun to Costa, and there's the remainder of his team coming in, but it, not in time! Jeez, this is not looking good for inside games at all! That pause really caught him off guard, and now everything's falling apart, they really need to catch a little bit of a break for themselves. But now, there comes the steal out of Sailor Sanji, going for the bruisers, maybe even the sea giants afterwards, and it doesn't look like Oh yeah, it doesn't look like uh, inside games, they're not noticing at all. Heroics are available for them as well. Tranquility, Strafe, Wailing Arrow, Apocalypse and Starfall. Let's see if they can make something work with that. Ooh, Mikichi, what are you doing? Completely out of position again, the Apocalypse comes in but doesn't do all that much. Singa might fall, Lunan's also quite low as well, but oh, look at that Maw once again. They're gonna finish them off pretty soon here. Triple kill almost at the same time. Malfurion, Savannahs, and Vala, and now Hydex is in trouble. They're gonna give chase here. Lunan is quite low, but they're gonna get that final kill as well. And that's a team wipe. Sailor Senshi is on fire. And if they want to, they could go for a lot of seats right now. But no, they're sticking around for a little bit longer. Get a little bit more XP and level 13 already available. Pre-Sans on Tassadar. Mutalist taken by Zagara. Relentless on Stitches. And Uther and Jainer, a little bit cautious, can't really decide so far. But look at that, I'm gonna go straight for that uh, bottom garden terror. And we have Shrink Ray on Uther and improved ice block for Jaina. Ooh, nice, nice idea. So Jaina might actually go in the midst of battle if she, if she uses this. 
because it gives uh, her ice block the ability to shill enemies uh, once she drops out of the ice block. And they have a little bit of time to go for the top shambler, but it's almost done for, and ah, they shouldn't really risk it. They have their own shambler available now pretty soon, but still, they're gonna go for the free seats, which is a good idea. Almost get that next shambler available. Oh yes, they do. They do. Next Shambler is available, so Shambler vs Shambler fight is incoming. Inside games, they can still turn this around, they're only two levels behind. Uh, they just need to soak XP and get one or two good team fights, and they're still in this. And so far they've shown some really good decision making, so... I... I still think it's... well, it's widely possible. And there we go. A little bit of a rotation coming out, but as soon as they see, okay, Garden Terror is in mid lane, I think they're gonna switch things up and have that little Garden Terror versus Garden Terror fight. But so far, maybe backing off is the right idea. Level 13 talents are quite important, and missing them, uh, I guess defense is a solid option. Right now, they're not gonna, they're not gonna soak too much experience either. And wow, uh, she already quite exposed. Art going straight for the keep. A nice starfall to back him off, but yeah, it's not gonna force him to back off. Cost them missing his uh, missing his um, hook there. And Art already took quite a bit of damage. I don't think it's gonna do all that much uh, with being in the Garden Terra. And there we go, he drops out. And can they follow up on it? Not really. Mikachu giving chase, but it's not not really working out all that well. well. He actually needs to watch out, but his entire team is almost on top of him. Oh, there comes, there comes the maw, high decks will drop, and no follow-up, they're gonna get that kill on the keep, giving them even more of an advantage in the experience, 3 level advantage, there comes the hook onto Darren Echo, and another shrink rate follow-up, but a good Divine Storm to stop him. Alright, and finally reacting to those sea giants in top lane, oh, sea giants will be taken again on the side of Sailor Sanji. Going for the steal here. They're gonna be relentless in their aggression. They're gonna get that bottom forward and then keep on trucking in the mid lane. Maybe even catch someone off guard. Oh, Costa. He tried. He tried with another hook. Didn't quite work. Oh, it's a nice spot. Nice spot to hook. And yeah, bottom forward. Already taking quite a bit of damage. This is gonna give him a, such a fast level 16. Oh, it's getting more and more dangerous for inside games. They can't really take a team fight whatsoever right now. And they can't really soak XP either, since... <laughs> wow, Sailor essentially there's just so much in their face that they can't really risk going out to their lanes to get more experience in. They just gotta have to wait for a mistake uh, by Sailor Senshi. And I don't think that's gonna happen all that soon. Not with a 3 level advantage. Come on, one more tower to fall and that would give him that level 16. There it is. Shish kebab. Two, car two targets for Costa. Well, I mean, if they're clumping up um, like they did before, it could actually work. We have Northern Exposure for Jaina, Brute Expansion for Zagara, Hard Focus on Uther and Dimensional Warp for Tassadar. Oh, come on, where's that fishing hook? Oh, I think he, uh, he actually missed uh, on the tower. But still, uh, with three levels advantage, they're just waiting for a nice initiate and then... Oh, there's the initiate, onto the Furin. Nice storm follow-up, should that be enough? Oh, jeez. The water element, they might have made it. Sing him. A nice little ice block on the Jekyll. They might go for Lunar, and they do get him with his first one to fall. Nice little comeback here. On to Art, and ooh, with his heroic, he might actually make that getaway possible. Oh, nope, maybe not. Ooh, does he? Does he? This is gonna be tough, but he could lure him into the trap. They only have Uther down, they could still take this on. Um, the entirety of uh, Inside Games is quite low on mana, but they finally get that kill on Tassadar, and that should give them a nice little advantage in going for these seeds. We'll get that Shambler really quickly, and then top Shambler, maybe... Maybe they can still contest it. Tassadar has gone for another 30 seconds, I think they should try it. This is their chance for a comeback here. 
Shambler uh, is up. Who's gonna slip into it? Well, if they're gonna send Mikichi in. They can't really contest this, uh, t these top seeds, but I guess they won't. Nope, they're just gonna go for the bruisers. We're gonna go for the bruiser steal and maybe sea shines afterwards. And is Malfurion gonna take control? That'd be interesting. I think he's more useful uh, in his regular role, but uh, we'll see. No, it's Mikachi once again. Mikachi will take control. And with that, this is not gonna be a Shambler versus Shambler fight. Just one seat missing. Wow, that was really close. Both teams went for um, one mercenary lane at least. Works down here. Oh, just a single knight. Doesn't really matter all that much. But no Shambler. Um, both teams level 16. Double Blood for Blood on Vala and Sylvanas. We have Tenacious Roots on Malfurion. The Imposing Presence on Diablo and True Shot Aura on Tyrande. And without that Garden Terror, it's gonna be tough, and I think this might be the comeback possibility for Inside Games. If they overextend, I mean, the Garden Terror is very much a good hero fighter. Costa going in very, very deep and going for the hook onto Jackal. But Mikachi, of course, is such a nice help here. Oh, Mikko and Singham, they're getting quite a bit of damage on from them. Mikachi is quite low as well. He needs his entire team with him if he wants to make this happen. The good thing is, if he drops out, it doesn't really matter. Ooh, nice little hook! But Mikachi, he's in there. He's in the middle of everything. But it looks like they're not gonna engage into this. Jekyll is too low. And they're just gonna retreat out, use their Starfall, use all of their heroics, really. But, uh, nope. Probably shouldn't stick around. They're two levels behind. Um, they had their chance with the Garden Terror. Right now, nope. Not a good idea to fight. Soak as much XP as you can. Ooh, Mikachi dodging that hook once again. Really nice move, but both of these teams are just waiting for the next heroic to come available. That's gonna be Putrid Bile by Stitches, which is not really all that useful in this situation. I don't know why Mikachi is waiting for such a long time. Ooh, there's the engage. Good, good rescue. And that hook. Doesn't quite have a range. If you go for the Shish Kebab to get two targets, you're missing out on the fishing hook, and of course, uh, that gives you a massive range. Now don't get me wrong, inside games, they're still far behind, already having lost one keep, and the second one already taken damage. But, heck, uh, I guess they can still make a comeback possible. Only one level down right now, is for a little bit longer, a little bit more XP in, and Sailor Sanji could go, could go back. Well, they can't really engage right now. They want to wait for level 19, get a little bit more advantage in damage output and health. Ooh, there's the Apocalypse onto Mishko and Costa. But Mikachi completely out of position and a good, good... Wow, what is he wanting more? Three heroes in there, that was insane. Mishko is definitely on fire. And Jaina is caught out though. But Valid also dropped low and Mikachi does drop Boomerang as well. Well, I guess it's just damage control now for uh, Inside Games. Maybe if they get one more kill, they can make a turnaround possible, but uh, they're all way too high. Costa, oh, with a nice stun, it could work, but... Oh, yep, there's that stun. The shield comes in. Good save here by Art. This would have been the end of Costa otherwise. And Diablo is back. Let's see if they get more and more seeds. They need that Shambler, they need the Garden Terror. If they got both Garden Terrors, uh, then they're fine. If they are missing out on the Garden Terror, that's probably it for inside games. Can't really take on the Garden Terror without one right now. Not if you're that far behind. And Diablo getting a few free seeds. Now the remainder of his team is joining in and they can finally, finally go for that top Garden Terror. But, oh, Sail Sentry almost in position. There's Mishko. The Rogue's not quite up yet. But will be quite soon. And their Garden Terror is available. Oh, jeez. Only 18 seats missing. A terror has Inside games need to hurry up. They can, If they can make it to the Shambler and 
get a few shots in. They just need 18 seeds. It's not really all that much, but they need that. Oh, and such a smart move by Sailor Sanchi. They're just hogging that bottom garden terror. Art just sticking around the go bottom garden terror, buying his team a little bit of time to get there. And they'll just deny those seeds as long as possible. He's also losing time. 1 minute 20 seconds only for that garden terror, so... If they can't get those final seats, then I guess it doesn't really matter because the Garden Terror has already lost way too much time. And level 20 is available. We have Twilight Archon for Tassadar, Bolt of the Storm for Zagara, Hardened Shield on Stitches, Winter Mute taken by Jaina. And, well, Uther hasn't quite decided just yet. And their level 20 is still a little bit out. Hey, Kazanix, how you doing? Coming in for the final match for tonight, but hey, <laughs> at least you joined the fray. Yep, okay, those final seats, no way he couldn't get them. And this is gonna be tough. This is gonna be really tough for inside games. And they're going for it. They're just going for it. Getting that keep, probably going for the top one as well. I don't know, maybe if they get one hero out of position, just gonna go for the core instead. Yep, just gonna go for the core instead. There's the engage. Whoa, what an amazing move here to Mishko, dropping him right into the apocalypse. But Luna is gonna drop. And that was a nice maw once again. Mishko is just on fire with these devouring maws. And in the end, it might not even matter, but Jekyll got off a full strafe there. Mishko still alive. Jekyll trying to get away from this. Zykus trying to save the remainder of his team, but Diablo did go down once again. He drew them out for a little bit longer, but they had so much fire by that Garden Terror onto the core. Looks like they're gonna take it, and they will. Wow, what a close series here by Sailor Sanchi. Taking on, and last, lastly, also winning the ESL Heroes Community Cup number 30. Congrats to them. And too bad for Inside Games. They played some amazing matches, some really close matches. Had the right idea, but I don't know, couldn't get off to a right start here in this final.